Welcome to the Medal of Honor induction ceremony in honor of Master Sergeant Matthew O. Williams. Master Sergeant Williams was presented our nation's highest and most prestigious award for valor by the President of the United States, the Medal of Honor. This morning, he will formally be inducted into the Pentagon's most sacred place, the Hall of Heroes. Our official party for today's ceremony includes the Secretary of Defense, the Honorable Mark T. Esper, the Secretary of the Army, the Honorable Ryan D. McCarthy, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark A. Milley, the Chief of Staff of the Army, General James C. McConville, and the Sergeant Major of the Army, Michael A. Grinston, Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the singing of our national anthem by Sergeant First Class Jesse Neese and the invocation delivered by Chaplain Thomas Soljim. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave? O'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me as we honor a great American in this ceremony in a word of prayer. The Lord is my refuge and fortress, my God in whom I trust. God Almighty, Lord of heaven and earth, we gather to express our thanks for those who seek to liberate the oppressed, protect the defenseless, and fight for our freedom and our very way of life at home and abroad. Today we add Master Sergeant Matthew Williams to our nation's pantheon of warriors for his courage, sacrifice, and heroism. He understood the hazards of the profession and has upheld it with honor, integrity, and selfless service. Master Sergeant Williams confronted evil, was focused under fire, and fulfilled his destiny in a moment born out of a life of devotion to his team, his mission, and his servants to this great nation. God bless Matthew, Kate, their son Nolan, his family, and his comrades in arms. May his life inspire us all to serve with the same determination to act courageously. Lord, be with the special forces, our army, and this great nation as we continue to lift the lamp of liberty up for all the world to see. I pray these things in your most holy and gracious name. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, General McConville. Well, good morning. It is a great day to be in the United States Army, and it's a great day because we serve with the world's greatest soldiers. And today is especially great because we will honor Master Sergeant Matt Williams, induct him into our Hall of Heroes. Secretary and Mrs. Esper, General Milley, Secretary McCarthy, Sergeant Major and Mrs. Grinston, Ms. Hirschman, and all distinguished guests, uh, thank you for being here. As we induct a new member into the Hall of Heroes, it's fitting that we have four great Americans and, mem and members of the Hall of Heroes themselves here to welcome Master Sergeant Williams. 
Lieutenant General Robert Foley, Major General Will Swenson, Staff Sergeant Dave, David Bellavia, and Staff Sergeant Ron Shura, five are our Medal of Honor recipients. General Foley received his Medal for Action in Vietnam. Major Swenson earned his in Afghanistan, and Staff Sergeant Bellavia received his act for uh, his actions in Iraq. And Staff Sergeant Shura actually earned his in Afghanistan as part of the same unit and on the same operation that Master Sergeant Williams is being recognized for. Gentlemen, could you please stand so we could recognize you all? And I know that Master Sergeant Williams has a lot of families and friends uh, in the audience. His wife, Kate, is here. Um, Nolan, they're almost three-year-old. Um, he wanted to be here. He sent me a nice note saying that he really wanted to hear my speech, but he had some critical Halloween activities that he had to take at home, so he is here in spirit. Um, Matt's parents, Mike and Janet, are here. Thank you for being here. His sister, Amy, and her daughter, Macy, is here. His brother and sister-in-law, Cody and Sarah, and so very, very special to have you all here for this, this, this great moment. We also have 10 former mer members of the ODA um, 336, which I think may be the most decorated ODA that we've ever had in the Army, and two interpreters. Gentlemen, could you please stand so we can recognize you all? Thank you all for your heroism. And today we are inducting Master Sergeant Williams into the Hall of Heroes. It's a special place reserved for those, only for those who have demonstrated extraordinary courage at the risk of their own life above and beyond the call of duty. And Master Sergeant Williams will be the first to tell you that this award and his actions that day in Afghanistan weren't about him. They're about the soldiers he was fighting with and about the soldiers he was fighting for. In April 6, 2008, started like many days before with Master Sergeant Williams and his teammates on Operational Attachment 336, preparing to support their Afghan commando counterparts on a mission to kill or capture terrorist leaders. The destination on that particular day was a small village, high on a mountainside in eastern Afghanistan in the Shock Valley of Nuristan Province. And those that have been in Nuristan, it's, it's a beautiful place but not on this day. Weather and terrain prevented the combined U.S. and Afghan element from landing on the mountaintop. So Master Sergeant Williams and his team inserted on the valley floor below. As the thump of the helicopter's rotors receded into the distance, silence returned to the valley, and the commandos in Team 336 began climbing up the rocky mountainside towards their intended target. All the while, insurgent fighters, alerted by the sound of the approaching helicopters, crept into fighting positions on the rock face, towering above the advancing U.S. and Afghan team. Moments later, explosions and heavy machine gun fire shattered the morning stillness as bullets and rockets propelled grenades rained down on the team. On the valley floor, Mass Sergeant Williams quickly realized the lead elements of the team ahead were pinned down and in danger of being overrun. Without hesitation, he maneuvered his team of Afghan commandos up the mountain to reinforce the friendly position and disrupt the enemy assault. Master Sergeant Williams and the commandos suppressed the attacking enemy and began evacuating wounded soldiers, including his team sergeant, Scott Ford. Master Sergeant Williams fought his way up and down the mountainside for the next six hours, repeatedly exposed himself to enemy fire to render aid, evacuate casualties, and suppress the insurgent advances. And though four of his teammates were wounded that day, thanks to Matt, all the members of ODA 336 returned home. Every generation has its heroes, and we are in the presence of a modern day hero today, Master Sergeant Matt Williams. Thank you for your commitment to your teammates and Afghan partners on that fateful day. Without your decisive leadership and courage, you displayed the outcome of the battle 
would have likely been far worse. God bless you, your family, our great nation, and all those soldiers still serving in harm's way. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Secretary McCarthy. Good morning and welcome to today's ceremony. This is a momentous day for us. Where we get to honor one of our own, Master Sergeant Matthew Williams. Matt, I know you don't enjoy the limelight, so if you, I'll try to make this as quick as I can. But please allow us to celebrate you for a moment. As General McConville mentioned, Matt's parents, Michael and Janet, are here today. His brother, Cody, his sister, Amy, and their daughter, Macy, my new friend. Matt's in-laws, Dee and Anthony Gee, are here from Trophy Club, Texas. And as I found out the other night, they lived a half a mile from me for five years, and we have many mutual friends from the old neighborhood. It is an incredibly small world indeed. So I mentioned this coincidence to my wife, and she said she immediately wanted to ask me to tell everyone how much she missed them. So if you could relay those messages when you head back home, I'd appreciate that immensely. Uh, so message passed and mission complete. Matt's wife, Kate, is here by his side, and as mentioned by the chief, Nolan is in North Carolina on special operations for Halloween today. So for everyone, in particular, Kate and Nolan, thank you for the sacrifices you continue to make on, the, on behalf of a grateful nation. So thank you so much. Matt is a... Yeah, yeah. So Matt is a family man, as you can see by the group assembled here today. This is where he draws his energy and gets his grounding as the humble hero. Part of that family includes his soft family, many of which are here today. And thanks to the ODA 3336 up from Fort Bragg and pausing from their grueling train up before missions. This is the only soft ODA to have two medals of honor on one team and arguably, and we are verifying this, the most highly decorated in the history of Special Forces. The four Medal of Honor recipients, uh, recipients mentioned as well, General Robert Foley, Major General William Swenson, Staff Sergeant Dave Bellavia, and your teammate Staff Sergeant Ron Schur. Thank you all for coming. Ron, the pressure's off you today, so you can enjoy this one, bud, and you can relax a little and take it all in. To everyone here assembled, thank you for coming. Master Sergeant Williams is just like the rest of the force but more so. He's the embodiment of courage under fire, the bonds of brotherhood, and the very best this nation has to offer. You heard the chief talk about that fateful mission, every word of it inspiring. Today, I'd like to talk to you about the man behind the mission. Matt grew up in Bernie, Texas, not too far from San Antonio. His dad worked in the oil business and his mom a school nurse ensuring that he and his two siblings were able to attend every after-school event they had. Matt actually met his future wife, Kate, in elementary school. I'm not making this up. This is real life Hallmark Channel movie stuff. <laughs> Matt and Kate were third grade classmates together and destined to be married. Although clearly they didn't know it at the time. More on that story in a bit. As fate would have it, he and his family moved to Houston, away from Kate, although obviously this isn't where their story ends. Matt graduated from high school, heavily involved in sports, enrolled into college with the ultimate goal of a service in law enforcement. Moved by a sense of patriotism, immediately following the attacks on 9-11, Matt enlisted in the Army with the hopes of being a Green Beret. He was just like any other college kid, but more so. After selection on the Q course, Matt quickly immersed himself in his craft in special operations as a weapons specialist. Where the team construct is held in the highest regard, obviously Matt took a rapid liking to Sof. And Matt, just as he demonstrated as a sibling on the sports field and in the Q course, being a member of a team is what he does best. He quickly developed strong familial ties with his ODA as they prepared for war. And war is what they would find. 
On his first deployment to Afghanistan, with the odds stacked against him, Matt's grit and determination would win the day. The feedback from his team, comprised of members on that trip, to the subsequent four deployments of special forces, and their responses were unanimous. One of his former teammates remarked that Matt is known for remaining calm, cool and collected, and that these qualities allowed him to do the extraordinary. The running joke is that it's impossible to get Matt's heart rate above 60, firefighter otherwise. He will be the first person to drop what he's doing and help everyone around him. He is a consummate professional and the vanguard of Green Berets. Not a bad Peary Vale, huh? Matt only, not only inspired his detachment, but he also inspired the Afghan commandos that were partnered with him as well. Matt is the epitome of the quiet professional. He is funny and kind, but in a firefight, there are none better. Master Sergeant Williams would serve like every soft operator that day, but more so. In the same short time span, with the odds stacked against him, Matt's grit and determination would win the day, again. You see, about a month after this fateful tour to Afghanistan, and while on block leave, Matt attended his buddy's wedding back home in Texas. There stood Kate. And in a moment, the past and present converged. Providence, if you will. I did ask Matt if he was in uniform and wearing his green beret. Matt laughed, replied no, and that he'd worn a suit that day. He must have been like every other wedding guest, but to Kate, certainly more so. I know that Nolan couldn't be here today, but I wanted to pass a message along to him. Nolan will undoubtedly grow up hearing about that mission, and I wanted him to be able to tell her a couple things about his dad at this moment in time. So Nolan, your dad tells us you like cutting the grass on the riding lawnmower. The classic dad, kid, steering wheel and pedal combination. That you all love your quiet off post community and that your neighborhood is packed with a ton of kids your age. Your dad loves hanging out with you and your mom the most. And I know that you're named after Houston Astros legendary pitcher, Nolan Ryan. Growing up in Chicago, you know Nolan Ryan because he beats you every day. But obviously, this is a tough time to be in Washington, D.C. as an Astros fan. <laughs> but you're taking it in stride. <laughs> Nolan, your dad is just like every other dad, but more so. To us, your dad is a hero. Matt didn't come about these superhuman qualities after being bit by a radioactive spider. Master Sergeant Williams' superhuman feats come from his grit and determination. He is the quintessential humble warrior. When I asked Matt if he'd like to join us for a job in D.C., he laughed and politely declined. He told me he appreciated the job offer, but his desire was to return to a detachment and continue to do what he does best. And as tempting as it would be to steal him to the E-ring, the nation needs Master Sergeant Williams leading its operators. Master Sergeant Williams inspires us to be the best version of ourselves, just more so. Matt, we're excited and proud of you. And on behalf of your Army family, thank you for what, who you are and what you continue to do for our country. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to introduce the 27th Secretary of Defense, Dr. Mark T. Esper. Yeah, Secretary Ryan stole my uh, thunder there. You know, I, I had a chance to meet the family last night. They were very excited about being with the president, enjoyed to be in Washington, D.C., and I guess they woke up angry that the Nationals beat the Astros. Sorry about that, folks. It is what it is. Hey, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, Macy, ignore Secretary Ryan. I'm your favorite because I gave you a box of cookies, right? That's right. That's right. Good to go. Hey, thank you all for being here to commemorate uh, such a special moment for our armed forces and our country as Master Sergeant Matt Williams takes his well-deserved place in the Hall of Heroes today. In addition to Matt, as has already been announced, or his wife Kate and the rest of his family today. Now, look, 
Secretary McCarthy only told part of the story. Yes, they met in grade school, uh, but they met during PE class, right? And I told you I wouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it. And not just any other normal PE class, members of the team, you'll enjoy this, they were square dance partners. <laughs> Maybe Matt went on to be a world-class square dancer, I don't know. Maybe that's what enabled him to go up and down that mountain multiple times, but that's where it all began, square dancing. Uh, I don't think Johnny Rambo ever square danced, Matt, so anyways. Uh, we also welcome his Army teammates from uh, 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 A-Team 3336 who fought alongside Matt. Thank you all for being here. It's tremendous. It just shows the strength and unity of your team. And thank you all for your service to the nation as well. And we've already introduced the previous Medal of Honor winners. Thank you all for being here. Ron, good to see you again as well. Um, glad you all can make it here for this very, very important today. You know, you may all recall the words of uh, President George W. Bush upon the launch of Operation Enduring Freedom in 2001 when he said, quote, since September 11th, an entire generation of young Americans has gained new understanding of the value of freedom and its cost and its duty and its sacrifice. As you heard, Matt made his decision to join the Army in the wake of 9-11, precisely because he understood that our freedom is worth every cost and every sacrifice. And on that day in the Shock Valley, the day that earned him the Medal of Honor, he was prepared to sacrifice it all. Matt's feats of courage will surely be an inspiration for future generations of service members. Those hours he spent fighting his way up and down a mountain while being attacked by more than 200 enemy insurgents were not only in defense of his teammates under siege, but also in defense of the very principles that led him to a career of military service. We are thankful that Matt has chosen to serve for 14 years and counting. And we are grateful for the opportunity to honor him as one of the rare warriors whose leadership helped shape the story of America's fighting spirit, courage under fire, and military strength. Since the Civil War, the Medal of Honor has immortalized the uncommon valor of our service members on the field of battle. In every conflict, near and far, American men and women have answered the call to serve and executed their mission with the same resolve as those who came before them. There is a common thread in each of their stories, one that stands the test of time, an extraordinary commitment to duty, to team, to mission over self. Our conflicts today continue to reveal some of our nation's most courageous heroes who embody that spirit. Each time we induct a new service member into the Hall of Heroes, we reflect on those who never made it home and honor those who are still in the fight. One of them is Ron Shore, who was inducted last year for his bravery in treating, saving, and evacuating soldiers on that same mission. The fact that we now have two Medal of Honor recipients from the same unit should just tell you how strongly our troops have embraced the attitude of team over self. It's this attitude that ensured every American in that April 6th battle returned home alive. And it's the reason we continue to be the strongest fighting force on the face of the planet Earth. Many countries recognize bravery and heroism in battle, but not all for the same reasons. What distinguishes the United States is that we bestow our highest honor upon those who risk or lay down their lives in service to the single principle that lies at the very heart of our nation's founding, freedom. This is the very principle that has sustained America's role as a beacon of light and justice around the world for centuries. Heroes such as Matt are the nation's foremost defenders of freedom. I recently returned from Afghanistan where I witnessed our troops' fierce commitment to team and mission above all else. I saw Matt's valor and integrity reflected in each of them. President Dwight Eisenhower, a great American hero himself, once said, quote, history does not long entrust the care of freedom to the weak or the timid. And we certainly have no weak or timid here today. We face many challenges and threats across the globe, but with men and women like Matt and the rest of his team in our ranks, I know, I know that freedom will always be in good hands. Matt, on behalf of the entire Department of Defense, thank you. Thank you for your selfless service. Thank you for your courage and your bravery. Today, you take your place among the best and the bravest in our history. Now, it would be my great honor to induct you into the Hall of Heroes. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated during the presentations. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, March 3, 1863, has awarded in the name of Congress the Medal of Honor to Master Sergeant Matthew O. Williams, United States Army, for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. Sergeant Matthew O. Williams distinguished himself by acts of gallantry and intrepidity above and beyond the call of duty on April 6, 2008. While serving as a weapons sergeant, Special Forces Operational Detachment Alpha 3336, Special Operations Task Force 33, in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. Sergeant Williams was part of an assault element inserted by helicopter into a location in Afghanistan. As the assault element was moving up a mountain toward its objective, it was engaged by intense enemy machine gun, sniper, and rocket-propelled grenade fire. The lead portion of the assault element, which included the ground commander, sustained several casualties and became pinned down on the sheer mountainside. Sergeant Williams, upon hearing that the lead element had sustained casualties and was in danger of being overrun, braved intense enemy fire to lead a counterattack across a valley of ice-covered boulders and a fast-moving, ice-cold, and waist-deep river. Under withering fire, Sergeant Williams and his local national commandos fought up the terraced mountainside to the besieged element. Arriving at the lead element's position, Sergeant Williams arrayed his Afghan commandos to provide suppressive fire, which kept the insurgent fighters from overrunning the position. When the team sergeant was wounded, Sergeant Williams braved enemy fire once again to provide buddy aid and to move the team sergeant down the sheer mountainside to the casualty collection point. Sergeant Williams then fought and climbed his way back up the mountainside to help defend the lead assault element that had still several serious casualties in need of evacuation. Sergeant Williams directed suppressive fire and exposed himself to enemy fire in order to reestablish the team's critical satellite radio communications. He then assisted with moving the wounded down the near vertical mountainside to the casualty collection point. Noting that the collection point was about to be overrun by enemy fighters, Sergeant Williams led the Afghan commandos in a counterattack that lasted for several hours. When helicopters arrived to evacuate the wounded, Sergeant Williams again exposed himself to enemy fire, carrying and loading casualties onto the helicopters while continuing to direct commando firepower to suppress numerous insurgent positions. His actions enabled the patrol to evacuate wounded and dead comrades without further casualties. Sergeant Williams' complete disregard for his own safety and his concern for the safety of his teammates ensured the survival of four critically wounded soldiers and prevented the lead element of the assault force from being overrun by the enemy. Sergeant Williams' actions are in keeping with the finest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon himself. Combined Joint Special Operations Task Force Afghanistan, Special Operations Command Central, and the United States Army. At this time, the Medal of Honor flag will be presented. On 23 October 2002, Public Law 107-248, Section 8143, established the Medal of Honor flag to recognize service members who have distinguished themselves by gallantry and action above and beyond the call of duty. The Medal of Honor flag commemorates the sacrifice and bloodshed for our freedoms and gives emphasis to the Medal of Honor being the highest award for valor by an individual serving in the armed forces of the United States. The light blue color with gold fringe bearing 13 white stars are adapted from the Medal of Honor ribbon.
The Medal of Honor plaque will now be unveiled, inducting Master Sergeant Williams into the Hall of Heroes. Thank you, Secretary Esper, Secretary McCarthy, General Milley, General McConville, Sergeant Major Grinston, and Mrs. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, Master Sergeant Matthew O. Williams. Distinguished guests, my family and friends, thank you for joining me for this very special occasion. I'm truly humbled to be standing here before you. Uh, growing up in Texas with caring, loving parents, I was taught humility at a young age. My mom was a nurse, and my dad worked in the oil and gas industry, and they knew about hard work. I watched and I learned. Dad was always mentoring, and, and mom backed him up. Both taught me never to quit, to be a person of trust, and to value hard work ethics, and modesty. Later, I discovered these are traits of an excellent person and a leader, all of which I carry with me in my life today as a soldier and my newest role as a dad. I'm so grateful for parents who always encouraged me to serve my country, yet the Army wasn't my first choice. I actually planned to work in federal law enforcement, but when 9-11 happened, my plans changed. Though my decision to join the Army was driven by purpose, it was not a hasty one. I did a lot of research, and I eventually found the 18 X-ray program offered by the U.S. Army Special Forces, the unit of the famous Green Berets. I knew that this was the right fit for me. I simply told my parents that I was signing up to be the best of the best. There was no going back, and at this point, I had no backup plan. <laughs> And I, I was all in. Uh, I had every intent on earning the highly coveted Green Beret. But little did I know that that decision would impact the rest of my life. The amazing people, many of whom are here with us today, uh, have blessed my life. My brothers, assigned to ODA 3336, remind me of how important it is to never quit. It taught me to be a person of trust and to value hard work, ethics, and modesty. <clears throat> These brothers are my extended family, and I'm so proud to recognize them today. If you guys could please stand and give them a round of applause. This medal is dedicated to you. My brothers of ODA 3336, the 3rd Special Forces Group, the Green Berets, U.S. Army Special Operations Forces, and all those who went before us. For Special Operational Detachment Alpha 3336, we did our job. We were well trained and we trusted one another. That is why I'm standing here today. ODA 3336 represents one of the most cohesive teams our country has ever known. We were selected, trained, and equipped to conduct operations like no other force in the United States Army. Thanks to the cadre of the Special Forces Qualification Course, our journey began with the highest degree of preparation. Little did we know that a slated hilltop, April 6, 2008, would test, test that we'd learned, especially our trust in our brotherhood. Dad was right. Being a person of trust builds strong bonds. That's exactly what made up ODA 3336. We developed trust through rigorous training and tasks at hand, where the training Afghan commandos to conduct small unit tactics or conducting raids on high value targets throughout Afghanistan, we trusted one another to get the job done. Facing overwhelming odds in the worst of situations, no one on ODA 3336 wavered. We harnessed the trust for one another that we developed over months of training and preparation. 
We trusted that our medic, Ron Schur, had the training and mindset to care for four wounded Americans, all while taking overwhelming fire. We trusted that our combat controller, Zach Reiner, could call in precision air airstrikes with multiple air assets to, to suppress and destroy the enemy. We trusted our sniper, Seth Howard, would eliminate threats and allow us to safely move wounded brothers. We never quit. Even faced by our own mortality, we fought and lived another day. We are trusted by our nation and we trust in our leaders to ensure we are properly prepared, equipped, and trained for success. That trust is what makes our organization great and unmatched in what we do. There are dozens of stories of the men of 3rd Special Forces Group taking heroic actions for their brothers, their unit, and their country, most of which go unheard. The story of ODA 3336 is a strong testament to our brotherhood. There's no other option on that mountain, and we did our job with well-trained and trusted teammates. And I always trusted my teammates. Now, as a team sergeant in 3rd Special Forces Group, I have the great opportunity to lead a cohesive team. I get to use the invaluable lessons of my first trip to Afghanistan with ODA 3336 and other operations to serve my teammates, the Army, the Armed Forces, and our country. And after 14 years of service, my wife, young son, and our families now put trust in me to ensure that my current detachment is well trained to deploy and return home safely. <clears throat> Being a person of trust promotes a unit of trust, and I'll continue that philosophy. Again, thank you all for being here today. And for all the Green Berets around the world quietly doing the work of our nation, thank you. I wear this medal for the great men of ODA 3336, Third Special Forces Group, the Green Berets, the U.S. Special, For Special Operations Forces, and all those who went before us. Thank you all. Thank you, Master Sergeant Williams. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing and join in the singing of the Army Song. The words to the Army Song can be found in your program. March along, sing a song with the Army of the Free. Count the brave, count the true who have fought to victory. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might. And the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done fighting till the battle's won. And the army goes rolling along. Then it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way. Count off the cadence out and strong. For where we go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along. Ladies and gentlemen, please pause for a moment at your seats to allow the official party, Master Sergeant Williams family, to exit the auditorium. Ladies and gentlemen, please join in congratulating Master Sergeant Williams behind the auditorium. Please continue to remain at your seats until your row has been released. Thank you. This concludes today's ceremony.